I'll just, I'll jump in. And if and we think about that last year um, and what the world has gone through, um, the multiple crises, and you think about um, a global pandemic and an economic crisis and racial injustice, and um, you could just keep piling on. Um, so many challenges. Um, and at the same time, um, the issue of climate change and the environment and the planet um, and the impacts and the implication of all of those um, on these efforts and issues that that we face. And so when I look ahead at, you know, 2021, I think about it um, there are multiple things that we have to focus on addressing. And as we look forward, you know, MasterCard, we firmly believe that um, economic growth cannot come at the expense of the planet. And so you have this tension between humanity and environment or people and planet. Um, you then have this distinction between one and many and inclusion. And then you have the kind of foundation of it all, which is that balance between short term and long term and how businesses, um, you know, manage their business as well as how we address um, the challenges that society um, is facing. And so all of those, um, you know, it's a lot, but brings us to the situation where we are today and that addressing you know climate change it's bigger than any one of us um and it really takes multiple sectors it takes business it takes government it takes um the ngo um sector it takes consumers which we will talk about um pulling them into that discussion um today and um and we cannot do that without innovation and technology. And so it's the only way we're going to get there. It's the only way we're going to meet those goals and those targets that we know as a world, as society, um, as companies, we we have to face and um, have to address. And um, and so this is where, where it gets exciting. And um, I'm really glad that you all are joining us um, today. As MasterCard, we um, We've done, you know, uh, focusing on our own environmental footprint. Um, we're a payments company, um, a technology company. So we're not a manufacturing or an extractives company. So our own individual footprint isn't that significant, but we've done the things like setting our science-based targets and 100% renewable energy, um, you know, following TCFD and climate resiliency and those things. We can do all that. But we know that where we actually have a chance to make a difference, to make a dent, um, to actually have impact on climate change is when we engage our network. And I think of it, I call it our, you know, our network effect. And if you think about the pos unique positioning of MasterCard, um, we don't we don't issue those cards. We issue them through the banks and then consumers use the cards at retailers and merchants. But we have a reach of nearly three billion cards globally. And so we actually have an opportunity and I see it as an obligation to play a role in consumer consumption, in shifting that consumer consumption. If we can help educate consumers and inform them about the carbon impact of their purchases, if we can then inspire them to do something about that and then empower them on how to compensate for their own individual um, impact, um, we actually have a chance. And so today we'll be talking about how MasterCard with Deconomy is looking to address with some of the solutions that we have. Um, you might have also heard one of the things that um, we announced last year is what MasterCard calls a priceless planet coalition. And again, it's this thought of the network effect and partnerships. And when we think about the private sector and the resources that we all have to bear, there are financial, but there's also um, the business model that we can engage through our partners. And so the Priceless Planet Coalition, along with now about 40 partners that we have with us, have committed to plant 100 million trees over five years to address climate change. And the thing that's really 
exciting about that is it's not a philanthropic, just a philanthropic or a financial contribution. Um, while the planting of trees are incredibly important, um, it is actually engaging these companies. And as I mentioned, their business model um, to reach consumers to shift that um, consumer behavior. And so if you think about it, if you think about using your MasterCard, um, whether it's in the days when public transit will come back, um, is that you swipe your card and a swipe on the metro or the subway or the tube, um, incentivizing public um, transit um, would actually turn into trees being planted. Or if there are certain retailers um, encouraging um, uh uh, spend with certain retailers, that would turn into trees being planted. Um, there are many different scenarios, whether it is a roundup or a um, donation at a point of sale. Um, but when we can begin to bring consumers into that equation um, is when we can translate that into um, solutions that can address um, the, uh, the the planet and the challenges um, that are ahead of us. Um, we also have you know solutions looking at that full life cycle of the card. In this, uh, we have a greener payments partnership, um, which we've created a registry of um, different types of cards that reduce the use of PVC plastic. So if you think about um, your uh, as a consumer, um, the life cycle of the card is what is that card made of? Um, what do you do? With with that card, and we'll talk about with Helena um, on um, some of the ways that we're addressing that, and then what you do at the end of the life cycle of that card. Um, and so, you know, with our business model being a payments company and a technology company, um, these are some of the ways that we are looking to um, address the climate. But we fully believe that um, the private private sector has a role to play. Um, and I think when you start to look at the strategic alignment of your business and thinking of climate not being something that is on the side mm -hmm. and nice to do or even an obligation. But when you really embed that into um, the fabric of your business is where we have a chance of um, of impacting um, and, and, and addressing um, the challenges we have at MasterCard we call that commercially sustainable social impact. Um, and so that's what we'll be talking about um, today as well. And um, so with that, and Elena and I, you know, will likely go, you know, back and forth in um, some of this conversation. Um, but with a little bit of that background um, from MasterCard, Elena, I'd love to, um, to turn it over to you and, um, I talked about this piece of engaging consumers and, um, and and this is where I would love if you could help kind of take our audience back in a bit and um, and share about Deconomy, about your inspiration, the problems that you're working to solve. Um, and especially as, you know, co-founder, um, would love if you could talk a bit about your vision and the mission. Absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, so uh, Ducanomy is an impact uh, impact tech startup, uh, and we founded the company in Stockholm in 2018. Uh, we actually set out on a journey to really achieve a sustainable lifestyle for all, and we do that by developing digital tools and solutions to help consumers change behavior reduce carbon emissions and reduce negative impact on society and ultimately actually drive capital to the solutions where it's needed the most. Um, we, uh, to, to really take this to the starting point, we actually, uh, part of the founding team was part of also developing an index together with MasterCard in the Nordic and, and Baltic region uh, back in 2015. It's called uh, Oland Index, uh, and it's the world's first um, uh, calculate impact calculation index that actually attributes the carbon emissions to each and every purchase you make. And we are building an ecosystem with partners where you, Christina, and the team at MasterCard is key. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are trying to connect the consumer with the producer, with the retailer, and with the capital to really try to make as much impact as possible. Uh, and um, 
we have high high ambitions and and really uh, really big hairy audacious goals we want to reach 500 million people and engage them by 2025 and help them reduce two tons of carbon dioxide emissions each, equaling one billion metric tons of carbon, and also drive capital to the solutions where it's needed the most. And I think all of you are, are important and all of you are invited to be part of this. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Elena. Um, so on this you know, topic of um, consumer experience. You know, we know that more and more consumers are changing their behaviors as a result of climate change. And that includes how we shop. Um, in fact, there was a, a study, a 2020 study done, um, I think it was by WEF, um, or survey done, um, that found that two thirds of adults surveyed across 28 countries um, say that they, uh, consumers have say that they have made changes to their consumer behavior out of concern about climate change. Um, so a direct to consumer solution. Um, can you talk a little bit about that trend first? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we, uh, a lot of research shows that consumers really want to engage with uh, with partners and, and also shop from brands or also engage with companies that really take a broader responsibility. And as you say, the concern for the climate has only increased during this time. And um, uh, what we can see through, because we also partner with banks from all over the world and with retailers, any energy companies, tel telecom companies, what have you, uh, and, and provide our services so that they actually can um, uh, offer an impact to the customer experience to their customers in turn. And from the clients that we've been engaged the longest with, we can clearly see that customers actually care about the climate and also try to change their behavior as they go along and also learn about how they actually impact the climate on a mm -hmm. daily basis. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I think um, the learn piece that you just mentioned, um, this kind of awareness and education, I, you know, I, I put it back in kind of, you know, the layman's terms of thinking back to the time when, you know, before we had wearables or something that would, you know, tell us that 10,000 steps was a threshold that, you know, you should try to um, reach or um, I, I'm in New York City and you can go into a restaurant, I mean, a fast food restaurant and you can see the calories that are listed on something. Um, now, with either of those examples, did that change everybody's behavior? No, but some, that awareness began, I mean, do you choose the croissant or do you you know, decide, okay, well, maybe today I won't. Um, the more that we can bring, I think, consumers um, and give that awareness at whatever stage they are in that adoption, you start to kind of raise that tide um, of um, it then becoming just part of people's uh, you know, kind of everyday decision making. Um, initially, you know, when people went, you know, kind of green in their households and cleaning out things, you know, it was a big, you had to kind of overhaul and do things. And then things start to um, become a little bit, you know, more natural in that cycle. Um, what do you think as far as COVID, how do you think COVID is changing people's attitude towards climate change, if you do? Um, you know, it's obviously exposed some inequalities and perhaps help us understand, you know, how to manage through a global crisis. But what, what have you seen um, as to kind of how you think COVID is affecting in a positive, negative, um, you know, moving things more forward, stagnant? Um, well, so I, I, first of all, I think there are many aspects to that question. Uh, and one, of course, yeah. being <laughs> that we all noticed and learned once the, the, the images, uh, images was actually spread across the globe in, in March and April when production went down in local production cities around the globe, that carbon dioxide emissions or local pollution actually was, uh, was reduced. Um, and I also think mm -hmm. that people... Mm -hmm do think more carefully and, and will also perhaps have a shift mm -hmm. in attitude going forward when it comes to the ecosystem and how, you know, how everything is really interconnected and how uh, diversity, how, how climate, how, how our way of living really is impacting um, 
everything on the planet and that we are connected. Um, and we actually did a survey together with MasterCard in the Nordic and Baltic region just when uh, after COVID hit. So in, in we looked at data from, from the consumer spending during March and uh, March, April and May. Uh, and what we saw was that, first of all, carbon emissions during this time it was reduced by uh, 29% uh, on average. We mm -hmm. could see mm -hmm. what you would actually anticipate that also a lot of the different lifestyle factors like your, your transportation, flights, uh, going to hotels, uh, taking cruises actually was reduced as well. And on the other side, mm -hmm. uh, spending, i.e. carbon emissions, rose on, on, on uh, lifestyle factors such as uh, interior design, home and gardening, uh, beauty and fashion, or, and, and also actually gasoline, which, is, which has a negative effect. Uh, but one, one interesting fact was also that during this time, uh, for instance, we could see that, for instance, gambling, which has both an, an impact long term on people's health mm -hmm. and economy, uh, actually also was reduced by 74% during this time. But we could clearly see the patterns that you would actually assume uh, through our service and also how consumer yeah. changed behaviors during that time. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's wild. I think if you think back, um, you know, a year ago, if world leaders had said to their citizens um, that they, you have to stay home, you have to lock down, you cannot go to work, you have to close your businesses, um, you cannot see your friends, you cannot um, see your family, you cannot travel um, because of climate change. No one would have done it. The 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 trade off was was too great. However, we didn't have that choice. It was because of a pandemic. Although, as you've just talked about, um, we did see some of those um, the impacts and the effects um, as it relates to climate change. And so, I think you know, here we are, the beginning of a of a new year, and you know, there are vaccines and. You know, while not soon enough, um, you know, they're looking forward. There is um, it's, it's how we come out of this and um, how we now look and how individuals um, see the environment, the planet, um, climate change. It, it, in some ways, you know, those who have not had the liberty to get outside to be in nature, um, you know, it, it's something that so many people, you know, we, we took for granted. And, um, and so, you know, it's, it's in front of us. Um, and what I'm excited about what you're going to um, show us um, in a few minutes, because it really um, it brings it to life is how we take these concepts that are, a lot of people think, you know, climate change and, um, and uh, CO2 emissions and greenhouse gas and um, carbon neutrality, which you hear at a country level, you hear at a company level, and really what can I as a single individual, you know, do? But what I think, you know, we're, we're gonna see is how you take that down to an individual level and that um, remove some of that complexity and that people can start to, you know, play that role. Um, so that one of the important pieces in between, you know, that, those concepts and the consumer um, are the partnerships and the technology that enable us to make that bridge. Um, so can you talk just for a second about how critical partnerships are to solving climate change? And with that, then I'll ask you to just even, um, maybe if you can dovetail into, uh, you know, MasterCard um, has a program called Our Start Path and Economy, which I'm so thrilled is a part of that. And so if you can talk a little bit about um, how we use partnerships and technology to help us reach some of those um Ambitions yeah. that we're after. So, um, first of all, I think partnerships is critical uh, because we no one has the full picture. So, we really need to work together also across the value chain and also with our different perspectives to really try to uh, find the material issues, work together to actually innovate and make use of our very scarce resources in the best possible way. 
Um, and and uh, when it comes to the economy and, and the MasterCard partnership, I mean, we're mm -hmm. small uh, startup operating from out of the Nordics, and so really based in Stockholm. And we need to stand on the cho shoulder of giants to really reach out. And that's why we have chosen to partner with MasterCard on a global scale to bring our solutions together, integrated solutions to the market, to mm -hmm. banks, to issuers, mm -hmm. to merchants, to retailers, to really make, uh, make long and lasting change. And um, the way I see it, it's clearly a win-win-win. Because by working together with you and, and your customers worldwide, uh, we can actually uh, make change. And it's, it's, it's a powerful, it's a powerful movement. Mm -hmm. And we can actually also, together with our joint efforts, quantify and measure this change. So which, mm -hmm. which tend mm -hmm. to actually help business and people move faster. So the joint effort from, from our team and the innovation and, and the, the ideas and the solutions that we introduce with your adoption, with your network, with your skills, and the retailers and banks out there, um, I think we have a, a great possibility to reach these 500 million consumers pretty soon. Yeah, uh, no, no small goal, um, but we're so glad to be working with you on it. And I will um, echo that and kind of the flip side of, of the partnership in the sense that, um, you know, MasterCard is committed to climate change and um, to our efforts, but this isn't our core competency. And so in order for us to um, to tackle the, the challenge, we are partnering with the economy because you have that subject matter expertise um, that is at the forefront. Um, and when we bring our two, um, you know, companies and uh, together, we can, um, you know, actually get there. And so with that, with no like further, I would love to continue our conversation, but I'm excited for people to see um, what you have to show. And so what if I turn it over to you now and I give you the reins of the system and um, let's see a little bit more in action of what Dakota yes. is doing. Uh, uh, great, I'd be happy to share. So uh, I'd like to, to start with, um, to show you all, because today, right now, I'll focus my, um, uh, my presentation around a, an innovation that we actually launched this summer. Uh, and it's called the 2030 calculator. And it's really one key element and a key tool under the umbrella of our concept of um, planet loyalty that we also offer to retailers and, and, and to large corporates. Um, but the first innovation we had in the market um, in uh, 2019 was the DO, the world's first mobile banking mm -hmm. service for everyday climate action. And it actually helps you uh, and it would help your customers uh, and people from all over the world to actually see and understand his or her carbon footprint on a daily basis. And um, I actually intendedly did not bring any slides around this today, but I thought I'd show you if you can see on my on my mobile phone. Good. So you can see actually that I have a, a carbon footprint here that I can look at, but and I'll see the change purchase by purchase. But I'll set the scene and give you an introduction to the 2030 calculator mm -hmm. and how we now roll out a service to help merchants worldwide to actually calculate the carbon footprint on their product and ultimately carbon label products and help me and all the consumers out there to make sustainable lifestyle choices already in store. Um, so I'll try to share uh, my, um, I'll share my, I'll share my screen here. Let's share the whole one. And then you'll see there everything. We go. Uh, mm -hmm. And now I guess you can see, can you see in the screen now? You can see something from Vimeo, yes. yeah? Mm -hmm. So yeah. let me start by showing you uh, this. 
We have to cut carbon emissions in half by 2030. And with over 60% of an individual's carbon footprint being linked to consumption, we have to start understanding the impact of consumption on our planet and start choosing lower impact products. It's one of the most important decisions we as individuals can make each day. But for that, we need brands to carbon label their products. Unfortunately, brands have a really hard time calculating their product's carbon footprint. This is especially worrisome since small and medium-sized brands that want to be transparent about their product's impact simply lack the resources to do so. Duconomy is a Swedish fintech that provides digital services to help consumers reduce the footprint generated by their consumption. With this in mind, Duconomy launched the 2030 Calculator, a tool allowing any brand to calculate the carbon footprint of their products. It cuts down on the time spent on calculating from weeks to minutes and the cost from tens of thousands of dollars to free. The 2030 Calculator is an open platform where each brand that performs a calculation contribute their own emission data, enabling competitors to use the same data and methodology to calculate their product's carbon footprint. Because when facing the climate crisis, no brand has any competitors. The only real challenge is the ever-increasing carbon emissions caused by irresponsible mass consumption. Since our beta launch, world-leading brands have started calculating carbon footprints and even world-leading institutes and organisations are reconsidering making data more accessible, hopefully representing a tipping point to making all impact data available to everyone for free, for good. So, and just to give you a, a bit of a background on uh, where we are uh, right now in this process, um, we, um, we have launched the beta version of this calculator that I will soon show you online. Uh, and it's open source. Um, and it actually today contains roughly 500 different materials. And for those of you who are in the production line out there, you know that that's not by far uh, covering everything it should. So we're also working together to partner with one of the leading global uh, providers of uh, carbon emissions factors and carbon calculations on different materials. And later on in February, we will launch um, additional uh, seven, 8,000 new materials to the tool. And we're also working with different retailers already uh, in Europe, in the US and in other parts of the world to actually find ways to create a global carbon files to be able to quantify and calculate uh, the carbon footprint on product level through AI and other uh, different technology tools. But I thought I'd take you through a calculation um, Great. in the calculator online. You can all go online after this and you can do your own calculations to try it out. And that, um, that's, yeah, so you can you can see um, right away. And um, Elena, while you're pulling, pulling that up, you know, I, I think this this idea um, of we all know the the financial uh, cost of something that we purchase. Um, you know, you go in a store and the first thing, or the first thing I do is look at what, what's the price tag um, to determine whether I think, imagine then the day where um, you not only see the financial cost, but you see the carbon cost of something. And again, is it worth the value? You know, is it worth that? Um, and that's, to me, that's game changing. Um, and, you know, we're just at the beginning. So it's it's super exciting. So Helena, back over to you. Yeah. So I guess you can see my uh, browser now. Yep. Yep. So, so let me see 2030calculator.com. There we go. So uh, this is then uh, the calculator itself. Um, and the calculator actually um, works in such a way that it actually uh, take into account four different aspects of a, a product's um, 
life cycle, cradle to gate. So the customer user phase is not part of these calculations. Uh, it's only from, from uh, sourcing and growing the material until it's actually delivered um, to, to, to the store. So first of all, there's some generic or general product information that we need to tap in here. Then we need to add the various parts and the material uh, of a specific product. We also need to add uh, the energy source and the, the means of transportation to the distribution center. And we will then here to the bottom of the calculator, see the carbon footprint split into these four uh, buckets of materials, packaging, energy and transportation. So let's, uh, let's take an example here. Let's say that we will today take a look at uh, a pair of jeans uh, and they're actually called Chris, Christina jeans. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, the completely new line of uh, the Christina jeans. We know that a pair of jeans and these pairs of uh, pair of jeans actually um, weighs 800 grams. We know that, so this actually belongs to the apparel um, category and uh, these pair, uh, these pair of jeans doesn't come with any packaging. So I'll just take, take no there. Then let's go to take a look at the various parts of, of, of the, uh, this product. Uh, first of all, um, we have um, the, uh, uh, the textile and uh, it's actually, I'll put it in there, it's textile and the ma material is denim. We have denim here. Um, and the quality, so uh, these pair of jeans are really um, heavy processing, it's heavy processing behind that cotton. Um, we know that uh, the textile in these pair, pair of jeans really is, uh, weighs 600 grams. And um, we know that the supplier uh, of, of the cotton and of the uh, textile is li really based in uh, Xinjiang. So this is really where we have a production line in, in China. Uh, the, the means of transport from, from the uh, production site to, to the factory is really a, a medium truck. Let's say it's a medium truck. Okay, so now we have the denim there. Um, uh, so these uh, pair of jeans uh, then have um, zippers. We need to add zippers uh, to the calculation and that's metal. Uh, the subcategory in this case is uh, copper. And the quality is, uh, it's not recycled in this case. So let's take virgin material. And the zippers weigh 200 grams. And it's been, pre this is actually produced in Wang, Guangzhou, in the Guangzhou region. And the transportation um, to, um, the the production site again is uh, actually um, small trucks. So now we've uh, added denim and we've added copper to the calculation. Let's then look at the energy usage and the transportation. So the manufacturing. I hope my jeans aren't too bad. <laughs> uh, we'll see, um... Christina. <laughs> Oh, this is exciting. I know, I know. Uh, so your, the production site for, for um, uh, or the factory is really located in the Beijing area. Uh, the energy source is um, sadly enough not renewable. So let's take non-renewable energy here and we will stick with the um, assumed value of, of energy consumed for that region. Uh, and uh, the brand 
distribution center, well, that's really, we need to actually um, ship these uh, genes to New York because that's where it sh shall be uh, finally to then be distributed to the sales centers and, and the stores. And the mode of transportation is really via uh, ocean ship, so ship freight. And let's then see what the impact is from these variants. So the impact from these genes then amount to 12.04 kilos of uh, carbon equivalents. And you can in this case see that the majority um, of, I think we actually, we have missed this one. I actually need to fill this one out. Sorry for that. So I just had to type in the 3.2. And then you can see that the uh, majority uh, of, uh, of the carbon footprint in this case actually is related to, to the um, production and sourcing of cotton and copper. And then 29% of the carbon footprint in this uh, example then refers to energy usage. And this is really uh, to a large part the case. Uh, when you look at uh, products and the production line, uh, the majority um, of the carbon emissions through the up upstream in the value chain is really referred to either energy usage or when you actually source uh, the material. And then uh, this uh, is then the example and this is also what you could actually put on, on, on your label for the products to help consumers choose low carbon products. And also uh, through uh, the Planet Loyalty Program that we are introducing, this will actually also, as Christina said, come with a carbon cost so that consumers and customers will be invited to also be part of uh, compensating or investing uh, based on, on the carbon footprint of the products that they buy. Uh, and again, coming back to this as a tool to raise awareness and to help people understand what they actually can do themselves to uh, contribute to the solutions and also to drive capital uh, to change really. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks, Elena. Um, I mean, it's it's great to to see it, and thank you for taking us through it. And can you just remind people um, to go and do that themselves? How would they How would they find so that? So it's very easy. You can e you can Google twenty thirty calculator dot com, and you'll come to the site. So the site is www twenty thirty calculator dot com. Uh, you could also search for Duconomy if you want to, Duconomy.com, and go on to our site. And there you'll find the, all the links also to the Planet Loyalty Program and to the um, consumer experience that could also be integrated into your own digital tools and experiences. Yeah, fantastic. And then um, for further, um, if people are interested, please um, feel free to go to MasterCard and search on Priceless Planet Coalition, and you'll see our um, full um, suite of um, consumer solutions that we're looking to engage consumers to address climate change. Um, so with that, Elena, I know we have... Um, We've, you know, taken almost the hour for people and um, want to be able to give them some time before they jump on their next um, session um, for the conference. But thank you all for joining us. Uh, and if you're here, then I will say thank you for being on the in some form or fashion, whether it's your interest is peaked or you're already fully um, engaged in these efforts. As I started off the conversation, it's bigger than any one of us. Um, so we're all in this together. So thanks so much. And um, Helena, I'll just turn it over to you to close as well. Yes, yeah, so thank you everybody uh, for, for joining and uh, feel free to reach out and I, I, I wish you the best of luck in your own initiatives. Uh, and um, if you have any, any questions or if you want to know anything more in detail, please reach out. Uh, my details are on the economy.com site and I'd be happy to set up a meeting or, or to share knowledge and also show you what, what we are doing and discuss what you are doing and how this could actually also play together to, to, to drive change forward. So thank you so much for joining. 
Fantastic. And I'll just say for everyone out there, here's to 2021. Um, let's let's hope um, let's hope there are great things to come. So thank, thank you, you, everyone. Bye. Bye bye.